So maybe you've tried this one before. Maybe you've said, I'm not going to eat sugar anymore. But then it's as if you see it everywhere. It, you notice the lollipop, or the kid in the stroller with the lollipop, or the ice cream walking down the street. Things that you might not have noticed before are suddenly jumping out and grabbing your attention. Well, it's almost like once we make a commitment, it gets even harder to stay on track and follow through. And there's actually some reasons uh, for this that have to do with how our brain looks at and codes information. And through the course of this presentation, I'm going to give you um, a series of reasons and how our brain codes information that will help you really start to identify and begin to change some of how um, some of how our willpower is affected. Hi, I'm Holly Stokes, the brain trainer. I help uh, professionals train their brain for motivation, focus, and achievement. And with my weight loss classes, what I've noticed is that having a plan is not enough. So just knowing what to do is not what gets in our way the most. What really gets in our way are the mental habits, the patterns, the cravings, even things like self-sabotage. So we're going to talk about all of those in the presentation today. So the first thing that gets in our way of making a commitment and trying to stay on track, the first is actually our language. See, our language has the ability to focus our brain and tune our mind into um, different aspects in our daily life. Sometimes we're giving our brain the wrong kind of message and not even aware of that we're doing it. So how this works is there's a part of our mind that doesn't understand negative. There's a part of our mind that doesn't understand don't. So for instance, I'm going to ask you not to do something. Can you all agree not to do something? So don't think about a yellow butterfly because as you do, it'll turn blue and grow larger, fly right out the door. So what did your mind do? It thought of the yellow butterfly turning blue and flying out the door. So this part of our brain is interprets our language using mental pictures. And it's actually these mental pictures which speak directly to our unconscious mind. It's these mental pictures which tune our brain, tune our focus into different aspects in our life. So now think about the phrase, I'm not going to eat sugar. What does that tune your brain into? Sugar. <laughs> we think about sugar. Where's sugar? Oh, there's sugar. And the sugar is in the ice cream, in the, in the freezer, or sugar, I know I've got sugar in my cupboard. So that phrase, even though consciously we understand don't, that phrase tunes our brain into that mental picture of sugar. So in creating a uh, a goal or in phrasing a goal, it's much better to give yourself clear directions about what you want your brain to help you do, about what you want to do instead of what you don't want. So rather than saying, I'm not going to eat sugar anymore, what's a better phrase to replace it? I'm going to increase my vegetable intake. Perfect. I'm going to eat more fruits and vegetables. Or maybe I'm going to eat more fruits. Um, you know, whatever it is, so that that tunes your brain into focusing on the positive behavior, the positive result, rather than what you don't want. So now here's the problem with typically when we set a weight loss goal, our language is working against us. So typically, what do we say when we set a weight loss goal? I want to lose 50 pounds. Perfect. <laughs> that's, that's very typical. I want to lose 20 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever that number is. What does that focus your brain into? What does that focus your mind on? Weight. Oh, wait. It's the 20 pounds I don't want. It feels heavy. The phrase sounds like work. Does that make sense? <laughs> the feeling that goes along with the phrase is really important as well. So what's a better way to phrase a weight loss goal or an end result? So with my clients, we, tip, we look at a healthy weight number. What weight is ideal for you, for your body size, for your shape? What do you want to weigh? And picking a healthy weight number then gives your unconscious mind clear directions about where you want it to go, what you want it to help you do. 
So that's the very first tip, is to give your brain, give your mind, clear directions about what you want it to do for you, rather than what you don't want. So the other thing that tends to get in our way is our habits. So we have habits, anything that we repeat over time, the brain will turn into a habit. So repetition makes a habit, uh, like learning to tie our shoes. Over time, it's something we repeated, now we don't have to think about it, our brain can run it automatically. Tying our shoes, driving a car, we have a lot of habits that actually work well for us. Now we have, can also have habits that are working against us. When I first moved to Portland, I found I was craving chocolate chip, chocolate chip cookies almost every day. And it was the whole process of making cookies. I was, I whip up a batch of cookies, bake them, I'm handing them out to roommates, friends. A couple weeks are going by, every day I'm making cookies, I'm starting to bust out my pants. I'm like, Holly, you've got to get a hold of this. What is going on here? So I gave it some quiet reflection. And as I thought about it, these childhood memories were coming to mind. All five of us kids were in a warm, cozy kitchen, laughing, talking, eating, making chocolate chip cookies. Outside, it was dark and stormy, and our, the days that it was dark and stormy were days that were cookie days. So in Utah, I, where I grew up, it's uh, sunny, uh, about 360 days out of the year. It could be blizzarding outside, and it's still sunny. And in the days that it rains, it's like a torrential downpour. It's like somebody turned out the lights, and it can just pour. In fact, I lost my car in a flash flood in 1996, because they're so intense. These thunderstorms are so intense. So those were the days that we stayed inside and made cookies. Well, that was fine for Utah. Then I moved to Portland. <laughs> Every day it rains, my brain is like, it's cookie time! <laughs> so what I had to do is begin changing that mental habit so that I didn't have to struggle with the, the compulsion, the craving of making chocolate chip cookies. So because of our history, because of our past experiences, we have history associated with our food. And it's this history that our food isn't just about the food, it has meanings attached to it. So for instance, what do you think of when you think of pumpkin pie? Thanksgiving, the association of family, Halloween. getting together, what did you say? Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> oh, <laughs> apparently, okay. So thinking about the foods that you find yourself craving, Notice what foods did you grow up with that may have meant comfort or reward. So we have these kind of imprints, these mental habits around our food and the meanings attached to them. So this is part of how the brain works, is there's the grand archive of our mind, is our unconscious mind. Consciously, we only need to keep the information that we're working with immediately. So it's our daily action planning goal setting mind. But the grand archive of our mind is our unconscious, and everything that we've ever lived is stored in that grand archive. Then when we find maybe we have a day that we feel a little down or depressed, that unconscious mind will sort through the meanings attached to foods, and then it comes up with a craving. Oh, I want comfort? Well, maybe there was a sense of comfort around ice cream or Maybe ice cream meant family time, or sitting down with mom, or sitting down with dad. And so that uh, em the emotions that we experience can actually spur the cravings that we experience because of our history of foods and the meanings attached. So our cravings can also get in the way. And actually, in the program, we go on through a whole section about helping to change the cravings because it's the meanings attached to these foods that actually uh, create the craving or the compulsion. So, so the third, the fourth thing that can actually get in our way is self-sabotage. What I did from the, the classes is looking at the mindset pieces that people needed to shift, I started to identify there's six essential themes that people need to shift in order to allow healthy choices to become more natural. So just knowing what to do is not enough. We really need to change how our mindset works 
around foods, health, healthy lifestyle choices. So what I did is I recorded a series of six CDs, because I found I was repeating myself quite often with my clients. So rather than doing the same sessions with them over and over, I just recorded the series so that they could take it home, and then that also gives them the repetition, which helps their brain in, um, create new mental habits, new patterns. In working with clients, is I took all of these mental strategies, just like we did with changing the mental pictures, and I put them into a book. So this has um, goes through six chapters with these in-depth mental strategies that you can start using to change things like comfort eating, stress eating, change the cravings, change how your brain sees food. There's even a process in there for ending the clean your plate club. Did anyone grow up with, you have to clean your plate before you're done? You're starting to <laughs> Right, and the guilt. <laughs> so there's a process designed to help the brain create a new mental habit around uh, needing to clean your plate. So what the book does is addresses these mental strategies, these, the mindset piece of what we need to change so that weight loss becomes more easy and natural. Um, and you know, it's kind of like some weight loss programs will tell you emotional eating, don't do it. But they don't tell you what to do instead. Okay, fine, well, what, what do I do differently? <laughs> So there's actually a process in there that goes into understanding emotions, processing them, and learning to shift your emotions so you don't get stuck in the same negative emotion over and over. Um, so there's also, with the CD set and the book, those are available on my website at lightenup.me, also lightenupsystem.com. And we also have a six-week class where we go through all of the materials in the book. We do a support group, so you have the accountability with the other members in the group. And you're also engaged with changing, using these tools to change the mindset aspect of how you see and relate to food so that you're not stuck in those same old cycles of the cravings, the self-sabotage, the emotional eating or stress eating.